Welcome back. This week you're looking at electrostatic field plotting. So the learning outcomes for this week are just to obtain a better understanding of electrostatic fields by measuring the equipotential surfaces and therefore figuring out what the electric field lines are doing um, for uh, conducting paper. So what you'll actually do in the experiment is one, you'll be measuring these equipotential lines on the conductive surface between two uh, charged plates. And secondly, you'll be doing a similar thing, but between two point charges. Um, so we'll head over to the lab now and show you what I mean. Okay, welcome to the electrostatics lab. So this is everything you need here for the experiment um, where you will be looking at tracing out uh, equipotentials and electric field lines. So you've got your conductive paper here. So this one is for your plate capacitor. You see it's got two lines down here. Um, and for the second part of the experiment, you've got the two point sources, which are here and here. And you've got your trace paper, which you'll be using to trace over your equipotentials for the plate capacitor. And um, here is a silver pen that lets you see through the tracing paper. So make sure you mark out your points with the silver pen. Um, lastly, you've got your power source that um, supplies charge to your plates and your point sources and some cables to connect them and just your voltmeter to test the voltage at each place. Okay, so this is what your circuit should look like when it's set up. Uh, you can refer to your lab manual and check with your demonstrator when you're ready to start. Um, just before we do though, I'd like to mention uh, with your voltage probe, sometimes you can get your results jumping around a lot and if this continues to happen and it's an issue, then ask your demonstrator and replace it with something with a bit more of a blunt tip. That way you'll measure a wider area on the conducting paper and you'll get less movement for the actual voltage value. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on the power. And so <coughs> you, you test your electrodes, you should have 12 volts across the two. So on the negative terminal, you should measure it and your multimeter should read around about zero volts. It doesn't matter if you have a few millivolts on there, that's okay. And then your other terminal should read 12 volts. If it's not quite 12 volts, then you can adjust it on your uh, power box with this knob down here. Okay, and then so once that's all set and you're ready to go, you're just measuring um, two volt equipotential points. So you just move your probe around on the sheet until you read two volts on the multimeter. And so once you've found that point, then you then use your silver pen to mark out that spot. Okay, and you continue doing that until you have a whole set of points on your two volt line. Okay, so once you're done for the two volt line, it should look something like this. You wanna make sure that your points are evenly spaced and you've got at least one either side of your actual plates to see what the field looks like outside of this central region. So once you've done that, you go ahead and do the four volt line and then the six volt line and so on. So just to explain so you know what I mean, the four volt line is you just move your probe until you see the multimeter read four volts and then you place another dot here and you do exactly the same thing as you did with your two volt line. Okay, so I'll leave the rest for you to do in the lab so you can you know, it's a surprise, you can see what it looks like. But once you're done, you just place your trace paper over the top and you can easily see the silver dots that you put on underneath. And with your lead pencil, just trace over them so you can see your equipotential surfaces and follow the lab manual for the rest of this part of the lab. Now, for the second part of the experiment, the setup's quite similar. You just need to make sure you've got your negative voltage source to one point and your positive to another point. And you're using your multimeter to probe the voltage again. And you're just looking every 10 centimeters from the edge of your dot, it'll explain in your lab manual, and then finding and recording the voltage at each of those points. Okay, so if you're having trouble understanding where your electric field lines should go and why, I'll just explain a little bit. So um, the electric field is equal to the minus gradient of your potential. So what that means is your electric field lines should be pointed in the direction of greatest change of your voltage, um, but pointed in the negative direction. So that doesn't necessarily mean they're perpendicular, but if your equipotentials are parallel between your two plates, 
then that necessarily means that your greatest change is perpendicular to those lines. If you're in a region where it's curved, that may not necessarily be the case, but to a good approximation, they will be perpendicular. Um, another point is if you're having trouble measuring your equipotentials, um, make sure you use the blunt point because you'll get less uh, movement for your actual voltage level and to make sure you space your points appropriately because you do want to see the proper shape of these curves um, so that you can understand what's happening in the real world. And lastly, if you're having problems figuring out what your electric field should be based on what you've measured, just recall your linear equations and you can have a y-intercept of zero. That doesn't mean that your linear relationship is any different. So just be, keep those things in mind and you will be fine for this life.